So, um, good evening, good morning, um, everyone. So, welcome to this time in New Zoom seminar. Um, it's my great pleasure to welcome today's speaker, my friend, uh, Dr. Uh, Fei Long Meng. Uh, so, before we uh, start the seminar, um, just to give a brief introduction of Fei Long. So, Fei Long um, got his um, undergraduate a degree in Nankan University, Tianjin. And then he continued his PhD study in uh, Institute of uh, Biochemistry and Cell Biology in Shanghai, um, Science, Chinese Science Academy of Science. Um, after that, <clears throat> Fei Long continued his um, research career um, in um, Boston Children's Hospital Harbor, Harvard Medical School uh, with uh, Alfred, uh, study B cell, and then from 2015, uh, Feilong started his uh, own independent um, career, uh, also in Shanghai Institute of uh, Biochemistry and Cell Biology. I think it's really a great place to place to um, attract really great um, uh, people. So Feilong's research um, being, has been uh, focused on understanding the mechanisms of AID initiated program. DNA uh, damage during antibody um, diversi diversification. And then his lab mainly studied the machinery which underlined the AID specific targeting to the Ig uh, loci. And then the molecular uh, basis for uh, mutagenic outcomes during the immune uh, diversification and then uh, develop new tools for uh, ex vivo antibody diversification. I think it's uh, the B cell, uh, particular the antibody diversification is really complicated and require high um, intellectual input. Uh, I cannot do that. So uh, Fei Long actually got uh, multiple different awards. Um, he actually uh, being awarded as um, Cancer Research Institute Research Fellow uh, when he started his postdoc, which I, I think it's a highly competitive uh, fellowship. And then he got Lymphoma Research Foundation Postdoc Fellowship. Uh, so he being recruited back to China and then he got a National Science Fund for Excellent uh, Young Scholars. So um, Phil has really um, very productive and then uh, published a lot of high profile uh, uh, works. I think uh, particular during his uh, postdoc with uh, Fred Alt, um, he really concentrated on the AID initiated genomic instability in uh, B cells, and then when he became independent, he continues on this um, uh, path uh, to understand more sophisticated ma machinery for the uh, antibody uh, diversification related to the AID initiated um, DNA lesions. So, without further ado, um, I think today Philon going to tell me tell us uh, more about this uh, DNA damage in B cells. So, welcome, Philon. Okay, uh, thanks very much. Uh, uh, thanks for trying and Charlie uh, uh, for the kind invitation. And uh, uh, I think I will start it now. Um, I think compared to the other uh, immune room talks, uh, I probably will switch gear a little bit talking about the DNA repairs, which uh, happens to generate different, uh, the different, the diversity of uh, BCR or antibody. So uh, I will start, and uh, I think after this, uh, uh, or we still in this uh, COVID nineteen pandemic, and uh, even I think in, even if you find someone on the street, they can tell you what is antibody and what is a virus. So probably that's the the unfortunately that's the best chance to training the the the, the ordinary people to understand what is the immune system and also what is antibody. So basically, uh, we are challenged actually every day by uh, enormous of uh, uh, antigens, including this uh, SARS-CoV and also HIV, influenza, every kind of them. And uh, uh, our immune system actually can develop a different system to, to uh, counter or to recognize different antigens. So for adaptive uh, immunity, uh, they can evolve this so-called antigen receptors 
to recognize the different kind of uh, antigens. Uh, however, actually, the, the gene regions that encode this antigen receptor is very limited. So uh, for the antibody heavy chain, we call it immunoglobulin heavy chain genes, it only take like a two or three megabit on the genome. <clears throat> but this DNA actually can coding uh, 10 to the 11 or 10 to the 16 different kind of antibodies. So how this was achievement, that was uh, a big question like 20 years ago. And I think many uh, scientists in the field have contributed in this uh, particularly questions. And they found that actually program the DNA relations that generally can generate uh, can generate this uh, diversity. So when we talk about uh, actually DNA damage or DNA lesion, uh, most of people will think about it will cause it's a threat to the genome uh, integrity. So basically, for most one of the hallmarks of the cancer genome is there's a signature of the genome stability, including translocation, amplification, or mutations. But however, for immune system, actually, the program, the DNA lesion actually is, uh, we, we consider it a chance. So it can generate different diversities. So uh, it can uh, code in different uh, antigen receptors in, uh, immune, in lymphocytes, including B cell and the T cells. So basically this uh, antibody diversification process uh, started with uh, VDG recombination. Uh, that is a very complicated system that started with uh, endonucleus wrap. So it can cut and paste the different VDG segment into this variable region of the antibody uh, uh, variable region, uh, variable genes. Then, in the periphery uh, uh, lymph, uh, lymphocyte uh, tissues, AID can initiate this uh, so-called somatic hypermutation and class switch combination. So in the somatic hypermutation, actually AID can generate a point mutation or small indels at the uh, variable region of antibody gene, and actually class switch can switch uh, antibody class from IgM to other isotypes, for example, IgG. So eventually after this uh, uh, primary uh, repertoires mainly generated by VD recombination and the secondary repertoires that is antigen dependent and AID initiate, it, we, we finally have a high affinity uh, antibody repertoire. It have different kinds. So actually protect us from the antigen, uh, uh, from different pathogens. So that is how this uh, process uh, roughly is uh, started and uh, uh, finished. Mm. So actually, uh, after I set, set up my lab in uh, Shanghai, I think the five years ago, so we started to ask what is the major question in the field. So. Uh, I think one of the first direction we continually doing is how this uh, AID, it's a small protein, it uh, have a deamination activity, how it is specifically targeted to the, the antibody genes instead of the other region of the, in the genome. And another question we are wondering is like AID will generate, it's not a, it is not a nucleus, it's a deaminase. So it can convert C to U, on the single strand DNA in the genome. So whenever this you usually if it's in other cell types, for example, cell uh, stem cells, uh, if you have this modified base, it will perfectly repair back to its original uh, base um, uh, nuclear type. But in B cells, actually, they have a mutagenic uh, uh, outcomes. Uh, I think this U is uh, considered to repair in you know, error prone. Uh, pathway. So you will generate to mutation, uh, insertion, or deletion. So we are wondering what is the mechanism underlying this B cell specific mutagenic outcomes. And a third direction uh, currently in my lab is whether we can based on what we know about AID specific targeting and how it was 
uh, error prone repaired. So based on this basic knowledge, whether we can reconstitute this antibody derivation uh, in ex vivo cultured B cells. So that's uh, uh, what we are uh, mainly focused now in the lab. And uh, today, I think I'm going to introduce uh, some of our recent works and some of the uh, some of part of this unpublished data. How this uh, program, the DNA lesions, is uh, error prone repaired in B cells. Um, so when we talk about programmed DNA lesions, uh, apparently there will be some common and uh, unique features. So basically, we are more focused on what is unique in B cells and how it generates these different uh, outcomes. So uh, the DNA damage or DNA lesions generated in immune cells as a, uh, was generated in a physiological conditions. So basically in B cells, the first thing you have to consider is the repair efficiency. So uh, the, uh, for example, for hypermutation, we want more muta uh, mutation event. And for class switch, we want a deletional recombination, uh, which I will go back later, what is a deletional recombination. And, uh, and the second point actually is uh, another very important point is like, uh, whenever we have generate initiate the DNA repair and uh, also uh, efficiently repair back to uh, the normal DNA, we also should be consider the other uh, biology functions of B cells. So uh, basically the cells have have to tolerate all these lesions because B cell have to, for example, in germinal center, uh, in germinal centers, the B cell actually proliferate very fast. So the cell have to handle this DNA repair uh, at one hand, and on the other hand, it have to tolerate all this DNA repair to proliferate uh, and uh, uh, to proliferate and also perform other uh, immune cell functions. So basically that is uh, the two uh, stories today I want to share with uh, you guys. So the first is uh, how in the class switch uh, uh, recombination, this two recomb recombination happens in a deletional uh, ways. So basically in uh, class switch uh, recombination, there will be generated two DNA double strand breaks. One is in the acceptor, uh, the, the, the donor switch region, and another in the uh, acceptor switch regions. And also the B cell can uh, uh, be selected when it when depends on whether it's uh, express or productive uh, antibody genes. Um, so if we simplify this uh, class switch recombinations by using this lab, it will be two seizures. It can generate two bricks uh, tandemly in the IGH locus. So basically, if we uh, count the, the end, there will be four and one, two, three, four. And apparently, one and two, because they are uh, spatially very close to each other. So basically, they the joint efficient of one, two is the highest. But when we consider what is so the, the joint efficiency for one, three, and one, four, that could be different. So for other general DNA repairs, for example, if you use uh, CRISPR-Cas9 to generate two bricks, the frequency of one, three, and one, four joining actually is you know, a one-to-one -one resource. Um, but in B cells, actually, that's another story. I think this is uh, uh, five, uh, uh, six years ago, uh, Jun Chao, uh, when he was in uh, Fred Off lab, and he discovered a very specific orientation specific on joining in this class switch recombination. Uh, that is, one the, the, the efficiency of one to four joining is much higher than the uh, one to three. So one to four actually will generate a deletional recombination event, and one to three will generate an inversion. So this is not a depends on the B cell selection. So intrinsically, uh, the, the end here is joined in this orientation specific pattern. So the reason for that is whenever you have like this deletional joining, uh, one to four, it will successfully produce a productive, uh, uh, productive antibody genes. But whenever you have this inversion, it's not productive. Uh, so I think later on, uh, Xue Fei, uh, when he was in Fredot's lab, 
uh, uh, two years ago, they found that actually the chromatin loop extrusion actually can help uh, this uh, incisively help this uh, directional joining happens. Then um, I think back to five years ago when I first started my lab, I was asking uh, myself whether uh, there is a determining factor, specifically very uh, a chance uh, determining factor for this directional joining. Uh, so I think many years ago we started with this uh, CRISPR screening. Uh, uh, for this DNA repair genetic networks. So we started with a B cell line. That's a cell line uh, Tatsuku Hangzhou uh, identified many years ago to study class V3 combination. And we focused on uh, more than 400 of DNA repair genes and we generate knockout and we applied of different DNA damage chemicals. So then after a certain days, we can generate a matrix. So in this, matrix, we, uh, the x-axis actually is uh, different uh, DNA damage drugs, and the y-axis actually is uh, the different DNA repair genes. So it's, uh, it's about like a 400 uh, uh, times 40 different drugs uh, matrix. So by using this uh, uh, genetic screening, we have uncovered many interesting observations. So first of all, the DNA damage chemicals actually they clustered based on what they do. So basically, most of the DNA damage chemicals uh, can uh, uh, categorize in two groups. One is it directly generate a break on the genome, and another is a kind of a functions as a block or uh, functions through a blockage pathways. So even in the break, uh, we can segregate the chemicals generate single strand break, also the, the, the uh, drugs generate a double strand. I, I will not go to details for, uh, for this audit, but for the, uh, when we look at the genes, we found some very interesting cluster, for example, the non-hormone and joining genes actually clustered together. Uh, for most of them actually was a previously reported, for example, cool ligase, and also 53 pure very important pathways to determine uh, uh, non-hormone end joining. Uh, from this uh, screening, we found another gene that's called ERC66L2. It's a very long gene uh, name, but it's always clustered with uh, this end joining factors. Then we did a, a when we knock out in you know, cell line and check the drug sensitivity of this uh, gene deficient compared to, for example, ligase four. That's a classic unjoined factors. It shows very similar uh, patterns. Then we also did a CRISPR screening with this uh, all these genes. Apparently, ERC66L2 come out as a negative. Uh, uh, as a negative regulate uh, as a negative enrichment, we, which means it's a positive regulate this uh, process. Then we generate a knockout mice by two pair of uh, uh, sgRNAs, and the result is very consistently uh, su suggests that whenever this gene is deficient, uh, the class three recombination is partially uh, defective. And so we think this is a potentially new uh, double strand break and joint factors and also require, it's not absolutely required for class switch recombination, but it's required for uh, the optimal class switch recombination. So what is this gene? Actually, when we started working on this gene uh, in 2017, there's not much report of the gene functions. It's a belong to a ERCC6 family. So for ERCC6, it's also called CSB. It's involved in transcription carbon repair. And the ERCC6L is called the PEACH. It's involved in the mitotic uh, chromosome segregation. So uh, at that time, the only thing we know about uh, this ERCC6L2 gene is it is mutated uh, in bone marrow failure patient. So it seems this, uh, uh, we, we, we don't have that much background on these genes, but when we look at what it happens in the naive B cell and active B cell, we found whenever the B cell is active, this gene, the transcription level, uh, this uh, transcription level detected by GrowSeq, and this is uh, MRI level detected by QPCR. I think it's a, 
uh, the gene transfer expression is dramatically induced by uh, in the active the B cells. So uh, I think that's the only uh, enzyme factors whose expression level is uh, uh, increased uh, behind B cell activation. Also, this phenotype is conserved in uh, human B cells. So then we use a uh, technology uh, called HTGTS to check the enjoinings. Here, uh, I will skip all the, the background of the technology, but it directly go to this uh, the result. So for white type cells, you can see this dramatically uh, biased uh, deletional recombinations. For example, you have like a 94% uh, recombination happens in this uh, deletional way. But uh, for ITM, 53 pure X have all this uh, factor involved in joining. It didn't change this pattern much. But for ERCC6L2, uh, the most uh, dramatic thing is uh, this uh, deletion and the insertion happens in a one-to-one -one ratio. So basically that's a, uh, we consider maybe it's a specific factor for this uh, directional CSR recombinations. And we, uh, then we make a panel of uh, double knockout cells and we found actually uh, it's epistatics to the other factors in this uh, function. So we think we found these uh, key factors uh, that is for this uh, directional uh, uh, CSR uh, joining. Then we check the, Chromatin contacts by using uh, 3C based uh, technologies. This is a, a experiment done in YTAP and 6L2 knockout. We didn't change, uh, when we look at the uh, antibody gene locus, it didn't show much uh, significant changes. Uh, and also, we did this in the AID knockout uh, background, and uh, it uh, still see the same thing. So uh, this the gene does not affect the the, the, the uh, cis chromatin contact. Instead, it more functions through uh, uh, we think uh, DNA repair pathways. So as the conclusion, so we we we, we try to find what happens, uh, what is the role of this gene. So. It's a very long genes. The N terminal have this helicase domain, and the C terminal have a function unknown domain called the HIBO domain. Uh, so we did a kind of mutations and check what happens. So for the white type proteins, actually, it was recruited to the uh, double strand break site like in a few seconds. So it's a very fast recruited proteins. Then we found actually the C terminal. Uh, part actually is required for this uh, uh, recruitment. Uh, so in here and the end terminal is not. And the recruitment is not depend on the current no factor like a cool uh, XF or PARP. So, uh, so, how, so the enzyme actually functions through uh, its uh, I think that this protein function through its a C terminal recruitment function and the N terminal catalytic activity may uh, dissolve some uh, weird structure. Uh, I will go back to this top, uh, topic later. So then we check whether it's interaction with other enjoying factors. So this was done in two and three G cells. Actually, we uh, steadily detect its interaction with uh, cool XRCC and all the other enjoying factors. And uh, also we found it uh, interact with another new identified enzyme factor called MRI or serine. And uh, then we make uh, endogenous tagging mice of this gene. Uh, even we work on antibody a lot, but uh, we answer, unfortunately we never got a good antibody against this protein. So we have to use a uh, HA tag, the B cells to do all this in vivo. Um, uh, protein interaction studies, we found that actually in active the B cells, uh, this protein can interact with the cool and other enjoying factors. So it is a component of this uh, enjoying machinery and uh, uh, machinery to regulate the enjoying. So <clears throat> for most of enjoying factors, actually it will also affect uh, the VB3 combinations. So to test uh, uh, the this gene's functions in video recombination, actually we check the B cell development, D cell, T cell development in the single knockout uh, 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 mice. 
And actually, we, 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 we never see a different, uh, we never see a defect in VD recombination. Then we uh, think maybe it, it's a function in VD recombination is redundant with uh, other factors, and the most uh, kind of candidates is XF. So we did this. Uh, uh, we never see uh, this thing, but whenever in this XF not cost us, we see okay, it's a function resident with uh, ERC 6002. In the, uh, uh, in the XF single uh, deficient background, the function uh, 6002 was, uh, we, we got this heat. So we made a uh, so we made a panel of uh, double knockout and single knockout uh, pre B cell lines, and we found that in the uh, double knockout cells, actually the v, uh, VD recombination is greatly uh, diminished. So basically, when we check the uh, end uh, the, the end processing of this uh, VD recombination by a very old technique uh, called silent blot. And we actually see that there's more uh, end here. And we, if you look closely, you can see there's more smears on uh, this double knockout background. So which means in this uh, uh, XF6 out to double knockout cells, the end are not repaired. And also it could undergo uh, uh, great uh, resections in this, uh, uh, in this background. So, Basically, uh, this gene is not only required for uh, directional CSR, but also required for VD recombinations uh, in XF deficient cells. Um, and uh, the last thing is, is we ma already mapped the domain of these proteins, and it's uh, have a ATP activity or ATPs activity or helicase or remodeler. Uh, people never have purified this protein and uh, so far and don't know what's the exact function of this, uh, uh, his activity, uh, but we generate with this uh, 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 catalytic dead mutant mice. And uh, when we look at uh, the class switch recombinations, so here it's similar to the completely knockout, the catalytic dead mutant is also have compromised the uh, class switch combination. And uh, the reason for that is the uh, directional joining is uh, completely lost as uh, simply as uh, the not complete knockout. So there's a one-to-one -one ratio of the deletion and insertion uh, event uh, in this uh, uh, catalytic dead mutant. So basically the, the, its functions depends on its activity and then we look at what happens uh, in the, for this NCEG machinery and what is uh, exactly the role of uh, ERC6 auto in and joining. So we checked uh, the recruitment of other uh, DNA repair factor or end join factors in this one. And uh, somehow for pool packs, they are not affected by these uh, proteins. But when we look at the, the core ligase complex that's composed of ligase 4 and HRCC4, and I think in this uh, 6 out to knockout, the, uh, in, uh, we found that the recruitment of HRC4 ligase 4 is uh, dramatically decreased. So we think 6 out to major function it could be remove the either nucleosome or other binding proteins or RNA or other uh, things at the end. So it could help the loading of uh, extra CC4 and the legs for complex. And uh, so uh, here's the, the, the working model of this one. Originally, we always consider this a class with recombination by a linear models. And I think uh, a theory works from a uh, I think from uh, Fresh Lab have suggested we should consider this in a 3D model. And I think 6 out 2 uh, we still don't know uh, one thing is what is uh, exactly substrate. 
So it could be a nuclear storm iron, as I uh, mentioned uh, in the previous slide. Then it function is could be clean the end. So whenever this end is clean, XRCC for like for can sliding through this double strand break, uh, double strand break DNA and find the cool binding end, then it can seal the end. And uh, I think another possibility uh, so far we cannot exclude is its uh, substrate could be the misaligned uh, DNAs. Whenever this DNA is uh, imperfectly aligned here, uh, maybe six out one of the major function is uh, the associate of the associate this uh, misaligned so it can function as a proofreading uh, rows in, in the join. So uh, that is uh, the uh, still. Uh, the major open questions for uh, for particular this gene and also particular for uh, enjoining in uh, CSR. So um, okay, um, I think then I will uh, switch to another story we recently finished. Um, so that's the the second part. So uh, I think for the first part we are mostly focused on how this uh, recombination or mutation is uh, efficiently generated in B cells. And the second part we are focused on whenever B cells uh, have to handle this DNA repair, how it balance other bio biology functions, including it have to be a highly proliferate uh, state. So then we have to talk about another gene that is a, a gene called the REV7. Uh, it's a component component of a shielding complex, so it can inhibit the DNA double strand break uh, resection. It also effect downstream effect of fifty superfine pathway. So basically, uh, this gene uh, it's a very tiny protein, but it, it interacts with a lot of uh, cofactors. For example, it in fact interact with REL one. It uh, functions in the translation synthesis pathway, and also it. Uh, uh, functions uh, through CDH, so it can help the cell to proliferate through G2 or M phase. Also, it's uh, uh, involved in the, it's a new factor of a shielding complex involved to the end resection. So it's a DNA repair factor, basically. So a few years ago, we uh, are interested in this uh, function of this gene because it's also involved in this uh, 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 class V3 combinations. So we uh, we kind of, uh, we have this mice uh, from our collaborators and we check the class V3 combination. Actually, in the knockout conditional knockout B cells, uh, the class V3 is dramatically decreased. So uh, it's a very uh, there's a lot of decrease, and we also check in the resection, and we found that there's a the broken end at uh, Antibody gene undergo a lot of extensively in the resection. And we also check uh, whether in this class V3 combination assay, we can see other rows of this gene. For example, whether we can see its role in uh, translation synthesis. And we found actually in this knockout, uh, the C2G transversion actually means uh, the, the C is mutated to G mutation frequency is increased. And we also can check its role in G2M transitions by check the cell cycles. So basically, um, for a quick summary, uh, using the CSR active B cells, actually we can dissect its role in multiple biology functions. <clears throat> so uh, when, yeah, Along the way to characterize the role of this uh, uh, this genes, there I think uh, I think uh, for the DNA repair field, there's a lot. Of, in 2018, there is uh, a few papers published. I think I think the four Nature papers, a focus on the role of this gene, and uh, apparently we we are, we are late for that wave, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but we we are still we continue working on this gene uh, for its role in B cell uh, in class recombinations. And my student actually at the times every time he he mentioned to me and whenever he cultured the conditional knockout of this B cells, the B cells always die at day four. So 
uh, regardless of whether you stimulate the B cell with LPS or LPS uh, L4, so it always die. So then at the time I I asked. I asked him to check how this uh, cell was died. Then, interestingly, a cells, significant part of this cells undergo apoptosis. And when we check the cell proliferations, actually, there's not much a defect on the proliferation if you count with these live cells. Uh, so that was an uh, interesting part at the point because that's uh, the, the specific dye. Uh, cell death phenotype was uh, never seen before for other uh, uh, for other gene deficient B cells. So uh, that's one of the interesting uh, findings, and it's required for the active B cell survival. So to dissect these those, we use uh, the again we use the cis cell lines. Uh, that was uh, isolated many years ago by Tatsuko Hanjo, and uh, um, we generate a panel of knockout cell lines, including uh, AID, also the base excision repair, mismatch repair pathways, and we also generate all this double chain break response factor knockout, and all this enjoining factor knockout, and uh, Well, I think Phelan's uh, net is just a uh, Let's uh, wait a couple minutes. Um, I just turn off the I think it's a Wi-Fi uh, problem. Uh, so, so I I stopped at this slide, right? Uh, yes. Okay, okay. I mean, I mean, sorry. Sorry. Uh, I thought it was uh, my time is due, so you you cut me off. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead. You have enough okay. time. You have plenty of time. Okay. Okay. So 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 we generate a panel of uh. uh DNA, uh, different DNA repair factor knockout cell lines. I think uh, around like a 20 or 30 of them. And then we started with this cell line to dissect what's, the, what's this weird phenotypes we found in this Rev7 knockout. So basically we using all these uh, cell lines, we can check the class switch recombination or resection or translation synthesis. And uh, apparently here in the Rev7 knockout, also we generate a panel of a double knockout cells. And we found that like Rev7 actually affect the class switch combination and resection and uh, uh, all these, uh, we call it uh, CG transversion uh, efficiencies. And uh, we also check the, the G2M arrest. And uh, for example, in Rev7, there's a strong defect of the G2M arrest, also RIF1 here as a control. So basically, whenever we look at this cell survival, none of them cells except Rev7 and Rev3L have this uh, phenotype on cell survival. So basically, <clears throat> using this uh, knockout cell lines and also different assays, we can exactly map what is a defect to cause this uh, cell survival uh, defect in B cells. So basically using genetic tools, we found actually Rev7 and the Rev3L, actually they, they actually they can form uh, the error-prone DNA, DNA 
DNA polymerase. So basically, this polymerase can protect this active the B cells from cell death. Then we generate this uh, double uh, uh, the conditional knockout mice and breed it with the uh, AID knockout. So basically, whenever we knock out AID, which generates this DNA repairs, uh, DNA damages actually can fully rescue the cell uh, lethality, which means whenever you whenever we have this uh, uh, AID knockout and Rev7 knockout, we never see this uh, dramatic cell death again. So basically it means uh, the cell death is caused by AID generated bricks. Then we think that for this AID initiated lesions actually in the Rev7 deficient background is very toxic. Uh, then we use other uh, genetic models for example, AID, the deamination product from C2U can be processed either by UMG to generate the AP side or mismatch to generate different mut uh, mutagenic outcomes. So we make a panel of uh, double knockout, uh, UMG Rev7, mismatch two Rev7 and double knockout lines. And we found actually uh, this uh, toxicity effect is uh, depends on UNG, which can generate a lot of AP sites uh, on the genome. So uh, whenever we have a, a, then we breed the Rev7 conditional knockout mice with this UNG knockout mice to generate a double knockout. I think here you can see in the double knockout without of UNG generate AP site, actually uh, the AID lesion is no longer uh, no longer toxic. So basically, we the conclusion here is the unrepaired AP site. That's a, the AP we call it AP site with out of the base. Uh, it's very toxic and it can lead to B cell death. Uh, and also, we check the somatic hypermutations in Rev7 deficient germinal center B cells. And dramatically, here we found that the, the hypermutation is dramatically decreased. Uh, which partially is caused by cell death. And uh, we also check the germinal center reactions uh, in uh, this single knockout ref 7s You can apparently from here, you can see that the size of the germinal center is largely decreased in ref 7 because I think one of the reason is the, the active the germinal center B cell is mostly dead from the uh, AID generated lesions. But in the AID and the Rev7 double knockout, I think the, 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 all this toxicity phenotype is rescued. And uh, you can see from here, the size of the germinal center are come back to normal and also the cell uh, numbers come back to normal. So this means actually uh, the Rev7 deficiency uh, can lead to a dysfunctional germinal re uh, reactions, which uh, depends on uh, its low intolerant AID uh, in AID generated bricks. So basically, I think this uh, small story kind of uh, indicating another role for like a germinal center B cells, so how they balance uh, DNA repair and uh, its other functions like. Uh, um, proliferations. So Rev7 uh, basically have a role to quickly repair or replicate this uh, AP site in the genome generated by AID, so it can maintain the uh, the B cell survivals uh, upon AID lesions. Okay, I, I think uh, I will st uh, stop here. Um, so for the first story, six out two, there are four uh, students or postdocs in my lab driving the story for the Rev7 uh, story. I think uh, another uh, PhD student now, uh, he is a postdoc uh, in, uh, in Shanghai. Uh, in, uh, he driving the, the, this story. Also, we got a lot of help. So for CRISPR screening, we got a lot of help from Shirley. Uh, Dean Repair, uh, we got a lot of help from Shan and also uh, Rafael Casellas. For Rev7 uh, story, we got this, actually we got the conditional knockout with, uh, uh, with uh, Wei Xiao uh, in Beijing and also Xiaoming uh, help us a lot for the germinal center studies. Also a lot of help from 
people in the field and all, a lot of uh, my friends. Okay, thanks for your attention. Okay, so thank you for uh, Phelan's talk. Um, very intense. I, I think we can start uh, questions. Uh, if you have questions, you can put in the chat box or just uh, raise your hand. So I think I'm gonna start to kick off. So um, I mainly have uh, three different questions. Um, first is a general question. So the deletional recombination, you say it's also occurring in the T cells, right? Um, T cells don't have AID. That's, that's one thing. Another thing is, uh, um, I think for VDG recombination for uh, immunoglobal heavy chain, that is uh, deletional recombinations. And uh, for T cell, for T cell, I, I barely remember someone check it. Yeah, because I mean, uh, for the BCR, if um, it's probably using maybe different machinery, but I think the consequence is also will have the VDAJ recombination in the T cells. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I'm, just, uh, yeah. I'm just curious about the, um, uh, the physiological um, significance of in the T cell compared with the B cells, you know, I mean, the difference uh -huh. and also the, mm -hmm. the, if the defect occur on the VDJ combination, uh, what's the consequence for the T cells? Um, for, for T cells, if we only check the six out to single knockout T cells, yeah. there, there are kind of a, a small defect on the same, you know, the same as T cell, uh, cell number count. And another is if we have a double knockout, for example, a 6L2 and XF double knockout, and I think the, uh, including T cells, all the lymphocyte development is stopped. So if the, if the, that's actually my next question. If the CCL6L2 knockout mice, uh, the one which we generate is the total knockout. Is yeah. That so what's the general, um, because you are describing a lot of on um, the genetics and then also the uh, within the B cell phenotype. I'm just mm -hmm. curious about the G general um, knockout phenotype. Let's say when the mice get aged or, you know, the, yeah, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. what's the, is there any phenotype on these mice? That's, that's, uh, that's, that's a very nice question. We have the mice almost four years, from the line for four years. And uh, interestingly, I think I uh, I probably didn't mention that clearly, the the knock the mutant of this gene was found in a bunch of uh, uh, bone marrow failure patients. So that's the, the the only phenotypes in patient. So we did look at what happens in the bone marrow uh, development, uh, the the, the, the hemo hemopoietic stem cell development in aged cells. Uh, unfortunately, the mice actually didn't reproduce what we saw, what people saw in patients. So uh, the answer is no. I think in the old mice, we didn't see any defect on hemotipoid uh, in, in the bone marrow. Um, I think, but for the antibody titers, for example, for the IgG titers, in this knockout mice, is uh, it's a dramatically decreased. It have a defect on uh, B cells. Yeah. So it's have us increased susceptible to infections. Uh, that's why we didn't check this mice is all in the. We, we we didn't check that. So you haven't challenged this mice with any more model. Yeah, yeah. I think we, we, when, we, when we did the germinal center stuff, we always challenged with uh, some uh, MP people used and also uh, sheep red blood cells. Uh, it have decreased the immune response, apparently. But the proportion of the myeloid cells and the bone marrow cells is no change. Uh, we, we didn't check the myeloid. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we checked T cells definitely, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think my third question is um, because um, you say that um, the CCL, C, C, uh, CC6L2 is important for the deletional recombination, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but I think it's 
actually a surprise to me because when you actually examine the chromatin looping by 3C, you don't see any change. Even it's actually correlated with the DNA, um, you know, DNA cutting and then uh, process. Even that, uh, I'm curious why, or why you don't see any, uh, chromatin stuff. I mean, I will, I will definitely expect if you um, if you have uh, deleted this uh, factor, then mm -hmm. the deletional recombination actually actually change quite dramatically. But then, why don't you see any effect on the chromatin structure or co chromatin conformation? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I, I I think that's the point is uh, whenever antibody genes have this uh, loop, it offer a way to uh to make sure this direction also happens so that is uh, insist insist factors to uh, ensure this happens i think for erc 6 l 2 its a function is not in the regulation of uh, chromatin uh, chromatin contacts so that's why we it's a negative result but we think it's important to dissect its functions its function is more later on the on the next step on the dna and joining step so basically, I think for 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 that is whenever this uh, whenever there's a break, it never uh, whenever there the, the genome is intact, it didn't affect its functions. But when whenever there's a, a break, then it can uh, it functions at that step. So basically, for the model, we, we we still right now don't know because the, the biochemistry for this, uh, this protein is uh, super difficult. We, 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 we try very hard to purify these proteins. It's, uh, we never have a good, uh, uh, good uh, uh, proteins for uh, biochemistry assays. We don't know what's the substrate, but based on the genetic data, we are sure its catalytic uh, activity can remove something from the DNA. Whenever there is a break, it can remove something there. So, so there will be a naked uh, DNA there for the, this enjoying factors. That's the... That's, uh, uh, so when, when, sort of when, you do the, when you do the 3C, uh, what's the, how big the range you actually test it, you sequence yeah, it? That, uh -huh. I think that's uh, around 200 uh, uh, a KB, 200 okay. kilobit. Yeah, it's, it's not a big one. That's a, that's okay. the, the size of the uh, immunoglobal heavy chain constant regions. Because I was just thinking about possibility that even you say that it's keep the intact of the chromatin mm -hmm. um, confirmation, but the distal elements, um, you know, for the enhancer and then, you know, uh -huh. later, it's hard for me to think, you know, after the change of deletional recombination, the different transcription factor actually still bind their original location. So that, that's why I'm thinking that, that, you know, maybe the 3C, you don't see the difference, but if you expand the range, uh, maybe you will see the chromatin structure difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that uh, could be something we, we, we should do. And another thing we, 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 we do is uh, we, 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 we check the cohesion uh, Bindings in this knockout uh, or CGCF, well, there's no no big changes. So, just, so the general pattern is the same. So that's why it push us to think it's a particularly functions downstream of the break. I yeah. see. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think uh, Yuxia has one question. Uh, she said that uh, the uh, CCL CC6L2 mutation in in child has the early, I don't know, early agent symptom. He asked, she asked um, whether you have seen this uh, symptom in, in mouse. Uh, yeah, I think for the patient, uh, for a patient that's from uh, 2014, 2016, uh, there's a lot of description of uh, the role uh, uh, description of the, 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 the symposium, uh, the, I think a lot of phenotypes in these patients. And we, 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 we did check the, the, the development. And uh, as I said before, we didn't, we didn't find any like bone marrow failure, even in, the, even in very old uh, mice. So one of the things we, 
uh, we think is uh, uh, because most of the, for example, for Franconia, anemia gene not caught mice, they didn't, they cannot like fully uh, capture the, the phenotypes in human. So I think that's the, the, the area that the mouse model sucks. Uh, it never reproduce all these uh, bone marrow uh, bone marrow failure phenotypes. Also, we 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 breed this or mice to to for example for 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 uh, LDS two knockout background. In that background, I think the Fanconia anemia mouse model started the behavior like a human, but uh, our gene apparently don't function in that way. So the double knockout don't have any boomer failure, don't have any boomer failure phenotypes actually. Unfortunately, we, so far we haven't uh, reproduced the human patient phenotype with this uh, mouse model. I think that's, uh, that's probably uh, we didn't find the key thing or it, the, it's just a difference between mouse model and the human. Yes. So, but I say, I think my one of my following question after is uh, one is um, is there any report that even that you say okay human had different phenotype symptom as uh, compared with the mouse but is there any report about a human in the B cell defect report? Uh, yeah, that's an interesting question. I uh, I think there are probably probably 14 or 15 patients so far described for, uh, for this gene deficiency. And uh, most of them actually have this uh, bone marrow failure, which means all the blood cell count is decreased. So I think for, apparently they have this antibody defect, uh, but it could be caused by the general decrease of lymphocyte numbers for, for I think for it's hard to tell specifically the, immune uh, the, the B cell phenotypes in patient, yeah. Then, then the other thing I'm thinking of is um, in order to actually recapitulate the human symptom, maybe the other thing you can consider is to uh, put the gene on a different background mouse. Uh, yeah, that, 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 could, that could be. Would be. So what, what's in your mind for, we have all this in B6. Well, I mean, there are, I mean, there are certain uh, strains. Um, I mean, it depends, you know, I'd say, we, I mean, we can, we can definitely talk about this. Um, yeah, after yeah, yeah. But, mm -hmm. but I just say some of the strain uh, related to the myeloid cells or the bone marrow development, it's more susceptible. And then B6 mice, usually not very ideal to study that aspect. I mean, it's being reported. Um, okay, Xiaolei, Xiaolei, you have questions? Uh, yes, uh, uh, Thelon, this is really nice talk. Um, so I, I think maybe the first one is also related. Um, is there any um, cancer-related mutation in the ERCC6 uh, since it's involved in DNA repair? So a lot of genes, uh, I think, uh, involved in, in, in tumor genesis. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that's something... Uh, still going on in the lab. So we breed the gene knockout to uh, P53 background. So that's a general what people do check lymphoma there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very interestingly, whenever we have the double knockout, it's, for example, in the P53 mice, usually you have a lot of T cell lymphoma. Uh, most of them are T cell lymphoma. You don't have B cell lymphoma, but whenever we have this double knockout with 6L2, uh, we see a lot of chance of uh, B cell lymphomas, including, uh, mm, I think, including uh, something at very late stage, similar, uh, I think, uh, from germinal center uh, B cells originally, or we also see some uh, like uh, pre B cell lymphomas. So basically, whenever this gene knockout, uh, it definitely increases the, the B cell lymphoma frequencies. So we are still summarizing that. Yeah, that, that's great. Uh, is, is there any like mutation being identified in any like lymphoma patients? I see. Yeah, and um, um, I think there's a, after, after we published our, our paper, actually there's another one uh, from uh, Swan's lab 
in cell reports. Uh, actually, he analyzed all these mutations in uh, from the AGCT database. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing is uh, this gene is relatively new gene. So okay. um, the annotation in the database is uh, it's only annotated the N terminals. So in the database, whenever you look at the gene, it's only half. So whenever the, the C terminal have mutations, I think we don't we don't know or we need to reanalyze all this AGCT data. But based on what we know now, uh, is uh, this gene because it's involved in joining some? I think Swan is uh, thinking it could be a marker for uh, for chemo on uh, radio uh, chemotherapies. So for example, whenever for I think for a biomarker to respond to radioactives. So whenever you have radioactive treatment or chemo therapies, uh, whenever this gene is deficient, it's more sensitive. Okay, that's so great. It's, it's kind of a reverse situation. Mm -hmm. there, yeah. That's nice. Uh, my other question is, uh, so you mentioned this gene is upregulated after B cell activation, right? Mm. And yeah. so, do you know what's the like the the pathway between BCR and to the 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 expression or upregulation of this uh, ERCC six? Mm -hmm. um, we check the expression of the gene in all the T cells. Actually, uh, it is expressed, uh, but not that uh, dramatic. I think whenever we have naive B cells, uh, the the expression level is there, but uh, not uh, not that dramatic, but in, whenever we activate the B cells, either in activated B cell uh, in vitro or sometimes whenever we when, when we check the expression levels, I think in germinal center B cells, it dramatically increased. Uh, I think one thing we uh, we we haven't uh, talked about is it's even use a new uh, transcription star site. So basically, uh, when we use this technology to check the transcription, uh, I think originally in the naive B cells, it's transcribed from this. Um, I think from here, there's a extra one, but whenever, whenever it's active, it's started from another extron that is uh, far away, 30 KB is uh, far away from here. I think there's a regulate definitely by a lot of transcription factors. Uh, in B cells, also uh, we saw, we also see saw this phenotypes in, in human. So I think in human germinal center B cells, it have a alternative splicing. Oh, no, I think it's an alternative transcription star site. So it actually generates a protein that is a, a thirty amino acid different from what is in naive B cells. And we also check whether this. Uh, I think we we check whether this. Uh, uh, this we we call activity active induced six out two expression. It it didn't change much. Uh, uh, it didn't affect the functions. Basically, for this uh, very N terminal end, it's just a regulation uh, row from uh, regulation rows. It didn't affect the protein functions. So that's what we know for this one. And I think a lot of people, I think in the reference genome, these two actions actually was referred as a lano coding RNA gene actually uh, from our experiment. It, it's not, it's just the alternative transcription star size of this gene in B cells, yeah. I see, okay, so that's that's very interesting. I think there's a, a lot uh, to learn about this, this like a relatively new new genes. Um, so that's great. Um, yeah, thanks so much, uh, Fino. Thanks very much. Okay, so um, is there any other questions for Felon? Okay, so if there's not, uh, let's thank Felon's great talk again and really appreciate all the data. It's really intense. Um, there's a lot of information. Uh, we can get the time to, to discuss after the seminar. Um, okay, so thank you so much for Felon's wonderful seminar. I hope you uh, uh, everyone to enjoy their your weekend and hopefully see you uh, next time on our new Zoom seminar. Thank you. Okay, so, thanks. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah, bye.